name is Tanzila Sheikh. I am a correspondent in Exchange for Media. Today we have Abhishek Ganguly, the Managing Director of Puma India Southeast Asia with us to talk about the recent developments in Puma India and a lot of things when it comes to advertising and marketing. So Abhishek, uh, first of all, you know, thank you very much and welcome to Exchange for Media and thank you for talking to us. I just wanted to know that uh, Puma has been there uh, in this country since a very long time and it's a very uh, known and a global brand. How do you keep up with, you know, uh, being relevant to the different kind of audiences? Well, thanks. Um, uh, pleasure uh, joining you um, on, on this chat. Uh, well, I think it's a very pertinent question because as a brand, uh, staying relevant with the audience is extremely important uh, because that's the only way in which the audience engages with you and consumers that way is keep coming back to the brand because you know if one has to run a profitable company you need consumers who are engaged and keep coming back to you right and it, that's the uh, you know as simple so uh, various ways uh, i think there is no not one answer to this but i'll just try to pick various parts of this puzzle first and foremost First and foremost, if I, I'll start with the marketing funnel. So when a consumer is discovering the brand and you want to be um, you want to be considered by the by by the consumer, so you need to appeal to the audience in a in a in a platform or a language that the consumer feels is relevant. Uh, today, you know the the times of just putting forth your product in front of the consumer and expecting the consumer to buy is gone because the, the, the consumers have evolved, right? So you need to have a story or a narrative about the brand, which is um, very, very, um, you know, relatable uh, to the consumer. So it starts with having the right kind of a brand approach and, and campaigns flow from that. Uh, and contents actually then churn, get churned out with this type of a thought process. And that's what we have done in India. So we have not come up with, um, you know, campaigns which are just cut, cut copy, pasted uh, because we are a global brand. And, and connecting with the Indian audience is always required to speak the language that the audience understands in India. And if you look at right from the beginning, when we started our journey, the kind of uh, influencers, key opinion leaders, brand ambassadors we have engaged with uh, have have had a wide appeal and also either a wide appeal or a very uh, or have a um, followership which is um, which is very um, compelling. Um, uh, so that's what we have done across uh, sports, culture, music, art, because we are as much. Uh, we're just not a sports performance brand. We come from sports and sports is critical to our brand, but we've also got into culture and streets and and today uh, that's what sportswear brand, uh, you know, it 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 is uh, also encompassing that part of, uh, of, of lifestyle. So we have first and foremost to stay relevant. We've had the right brand partners and key opinion leaders. It has been with, our, with Art Kohli and um, you know, on on the on on the sports side, to having Royal Challengers Bangalore, to Sunil Chetri, Mericom, and I can go on. And and this is the current list. In the past, also we've done the same thing. Also on the entertainment side, we have Karina Kapoor Khan to Anushka Sharma. Um, and also, mind you, uh, let's not forget YouTubers, uh, Instagrammers, content creators who are today talking to the audience in their language, which is relatable. Um, uh, across various, uh, you know, segments. So that's one side on the marketing front. Then to be relatable, also the channels play a very, very important role. So whether when you walk into our store, um, the experience that you get um, and how the, well, right from the team to the overall look and feel to the experience of touching, feeling and experiencing the brand and the product plays a huge role in in um, engaging with the audience um also whether it is online you know online also um it's not just a convenience medium today it's also quite immersive um so whether it is social digital channels or is it e-commerce channels 
uh, you need to create the right experience for the consumers. So all in all, keeping relatability to what you said for uh, of the brand is of paramount importance for us. Uh, and that has been a part of our journey and will continue uh, to be, you know, we will continue to evolve, but the point of staying relevant is very, very important. Absolutely. You know, uh, the thing why I asked about staying relevant is there are a lot of brands who are trying to understand uh, this uh, new power purchaser, uh, 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 power purchaser uh, people who are the Gen Zs, you know, and this is that, that is where they're having a problem in order to, you know, uh, tap onto those consumers. And these consumers are very like, uh, how do I say, they, they, they go for relatability. So I wanted to understand how Puma is, you know, trying to, uh, you know, tap into these consumers and what are you guys doing and, you know, what other brands are doing wrong, if you could speak about that. Well, um, I'll restrict it to what we are doing. And I think uh, with reasonable success, as you can see on the business front, um, well, um, whether it is the Gen Y or the Gen Z, uh, we're seeing that every age group comes with it, a very, very different, um, you know, um, expectation, behavior, um, their approach is, is very different, their expectations, even from the brands that they, they buy into or engage with is very, very different. Um, and we're keeping constant um, eye on that. So one of the things, if I have to generalize it uh, for the interest of this conversation would be that creating platforms, which are expression platforms. So uh, the young audience um, wants to express and be a part of community. Uh, it is not you know, nobody today wants to be pushed uh, into something and, and um, you know, you cannot come from a, you know, high ground and say, hey, this is what it is and this is how we are. But I think brands which are able to provide uh, the platform uh, where consumers can come and exchange uh, and express and connect um, and also build communities in the process or how do you really, if there is an existing community, how do you enter that community um, and, um, and, and, and deliver a message which again is both ways. So mm -hmm. having a two-way approach uh, which digital gets in is very different from how it was in traditional medium of advertising. Um, and, and that's something that, uh, that is very relevant with, with, yeah. the, with the young audience. Yeah. Um, also, you know, uh, second thing with, with which we see with young audience is that, um, you know, uh, they, they, they're also looking for purpose and brands with purpose um, okay. resonate very, very strongly. Now, yeah. whether the purpose is around social or uh, causes or purpose around environment, um, environment uh, you know, around the planet and <laughs> hence, uh, you know, brands with sustainability missions and not yeah. uh, just yeah. greenwashing, but really yeah. having a very clear sustainable um, yeah. uh, objectives and missions and, and, and strategies um, resonate a lot with the young audience. Um, and, 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 and that is very, very important today. So which, which, uh, we also believe in our strategy mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And then third thing is convenience, um, uh, today because of various opportunities, you know, disruptions like quick commerce and e-commerce in as a, as a whole to the payment mechanism and the uh, digital payment structures, which have come out, which has made life so much more easy. Uh, and and the young audience today has is starting with this convenience. They didn't have to go through the journey, uh, which uh, a lot of us had to go through. That we yeah. got convenience uh, later uh, in our lives. Absolutely. They're starting with convenience. So when you start with having an ecosystem of convenience, where you don't need to step out for a lot of things from home, and things just get you know courier to you and ship to you. Um, so that's a very, very different mindset. Uh, and hence, brands have to ensure that they provide convenience. Convenience yeah. is a core, uh, uh, you know, element and um, 
uh, that 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 consumers want. So you know, I can go on and on on this, but <laughs> but I will take that bit of yours when you are saying that you know uh, the Gen Z uh, consumer lot is going for relatability as well as community building and purpose driven advertising or marketing or you know the brand they want to get connected with. Um, apart from that, let's I want to and seeking convenience. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, in the first point or, you know, while you were answering my first question, you also spoke about uh, the different brand ambassadors that you have had. So recently in the month of December, uh, you have had Anushka Sharma and um, I think in February, you also had a Harman Preet call. Both are women. So I wanted to understand, you know, uh, what sort of messaging that Puma wants to, you know, convey to the consumers. Is there uh, any, uh, you know, hidden messaging or any, you know, thing that you as a brand wants to convey to the consumers out there? Well, our our approach uh, as a brand is that, you know, extremely, um, on one side, we are very, very gender agnostic. Um, so. Um, and and women are 50% of the population. And hence, yeah. sometimes when people ask, oh, do you have a strategy? I said, hey, I mean, that's 50% of, of, of the population. So, of course, yes. Uh, and we are not doing this because we want to make a statement, uh, you know. Um, uh, and, and, and hence, uh, we've always been very focused uh, on having the right kind of key opinion leaders associate with us. Uh, on the women's front, um, you know, look at our, our partnership with Maricom, one of the legends of Indian sport. She has been with us for a long, long time. Uh, yes, of course, off late, uh, we've signed up more uh, because we are, as our brand is becoming larger, we're also trying to be more relevant to various different segments to start uh, to, to how you started the conversation. And hence, now we are having the ability as well to partner up with more and more, uh, you know, athletes and entertainment and inter entertainers, and a lot of them happen to be women. Um, and 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 we firmly believe that as a brand, we want to provide uh, women the platform to engage with us. Is the same logic. Uh, look at our proper lady campaign. When you look up in the past, where we did that campaign where we wanted to provide a platform for women to come and, and express breaking stereotypes because women, in, in especially in India and some of the traditional markets, are always expected to follow a norm or a rule and proper lady just breaks that rule. And that has stayed with us. Um, that approach has stayed with us. If you look at our campaign or how we engaged Har Harman and Harman started driving that, yeah. uh, you know, cricket, uh, look at, thankfully, um, women's cricket is now getting a lot of attention and now we are watching Harman Preet uh, and the likes uh, uh, Spriti Mandana and Harman Preet and they are also becoming um, getting their due uh, which is great or uh, and hence also on the women's cricket side we have like more than five six athletes playing for the uh, for the team so um, I, I, what I'm trying to say is that it has always been a part of us. Yes, now being a larger brand, we all, always have the more resources uh, to have more uh, brand partners. And yeah, I mean, and we have a strong belief that the world is, is, is an equal opportunity, you know, cricket, yeah. you know, it's in everyone's game. It has for years been called as a gentleman's game. And we believe that that is changing and that should change. We are trying to enable this change to become faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, um, and otherwise, talking on the business front, women's uh, women's uh, category business is growing very fast. It's growing more than women. So because what's happening is women are also playing a lot of sport. Women are now focusing a lot on their own fitness, and that's showing in our business as well. Absolutely. You know, I wanted to talk about uh, deviate, uh, navigate the conversation to business. So I wanted to understand, you know, after COVID, the post-COVID era, which is like last year and this year, a lot of brands or businesses are trying to get par with the 2019 numbers or pre-COVID numbers, whereas you have already crossed that. So what do you think, what are the three main strategies that you must have used in order to, you know, get it right? <laughs> Let me put this into context that um, for the before COVID, we were in India for 13 years. 
Yeah. As much sales that we generated in those 13 years, it took us 13 years to add that much sales. And in the last three years, which included the COVID period, we have achieved that much more sales, right? So our sales has actually been double of pre-COVID times. Um, and, um, and I would say things that we have done right to achieve that one is like, I, you know, the, the category trend, right? More people playing sport, more people working out, more people wanting a better version of themselves and using fitness as a, as a part of their well-being, mental and yeah. physical, right? Yeah. Then sportswear becoming more mainstream. Leisure wear is sportswear today. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, mainstream lifestyle products is, is sportswear. Um, a lot of sports fashion coming to the fore. Sneakers are becoming a fashion collectible. Um, yeah. you know, the, from the airport look to what people are wearing in offices to everywhere. You see our category growing very strongly. Um, now that has, that has really helped our growth. Um, and... Uh, yeah, um, what we have done right is, you know, always had a digital strategy, digital first strategy. Uh, and this is not because of the COVID. Uh, we, we've been around with our digital first approach for the last five, seven years, uh, which is coming towards, into, which is providing a lot of results. The people had to really change strategies during COVID and adopt digital transformation. We didn't have to do that. We just mm -hmm. dialed up because we already had a, had a, a digital uh, as, a, as a part of our strategy. Uh, we have a very consumer-centric approach. Our direct-to-consumer approach, both online and offline, has also helped. Some of the conversations and marketing we've already done, so I'm not going to repeat. That has also helped our growth. Um, and uh, yes, I think I can think of these three, four reasons other than what is at an overall level happening to the category uh, while we've been successful. Abhishek, I wanted to understand now, see, um, uh, I've been having and I've been writing about the tire to a tire three cities, you know, becoming a huge part of any brand's journey these days. These are the, these are the regions, the Bharat region is basically a deep pocket region these days, if you, if you see. So what do you think, how, how it has helped you also in your business and, you know, um, how are you leveraging more or capitalizing more in this uh, region? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, tier 2, Tier 3 today, uh, because of digital penetration, is creating aspiration. And with economic development, disposable incomes coming in. Third thing for our category relevance is that India is a very young demographic. And, and hence, um, uh, you know, a lot of the young people have now aspiration in Tier 2, Tier 3, even Tier 4 cities. And that's why it is generating demand. And what, what brands are able to do, brands and retailers are now approaching tier two, tier three with their own stores. And also e-commerce is helping this penetrate and serve this demand, right? So this is a real, real phenomena that's happening uh, because of the aspiration that tier two, tier three uh, and, the, and the disposable income, to, especially in the hands of the young uh, population. So what are we doing? We are opening more stores, uh, as you can see very clearly uh, from the number of stores that we have grown in the last two, three years. Um, and we will continue to do that, get into newer markets um, and open stores, so accessibility. Uh, E-commerce is really also helping us penetrate that because you know e-commerce penetration is today in so many uh, pin codes. Uh, we also work very closely in partnership with uh, marketplaces who themselves are really fueling this um, uh, fueling demand by providing for uh, great service um, and availability um, of, of products to, to these tier two, tier three consumers. So that's, and also we are spending marketing monies to, uh, to attract the consumer's attention and then keep engaging with them. Uh, even on tier two, tier three cities. So overall, we are very excited. Uh, we, we, we believe that we're just getting started because further penetration of our category will happen in these markets. So what do you think? What part of uh, your business comes from these cities? Well, it depends on what you put as tier one and what you put as tier two. Uh, over a period of time, if, if you take the top 
five to two. It's the way you see it. Like if you take, uh, um, if you take about the top cities out, um, in the last two, three years, we have grown about four percentage points of our share from uh, uh, the non-tier one markets. So clearly these markets are growing faster, obviously because of low penetration in the past. Absolutely. So somewhere around 30 to like 35 percent. It's, it's, it's higher actually. It's um, higher. It's higher because you also have to understand we today have almost 490 stores uh, in and, and a lot of that actually is in tier two, tier three cities. So, uh, and now e-commerce has come, uh, has, has been like I said. Yeah. So yeah. all of this is actually more than that. Yeah, so yeah, coming to the conversation back again, is that, you know, I wanted to ask you that, you know, um, e-commerce or digital or D2, D2C platforms versus the stores. What do you think, what if you could segregate the business that, you know, certain, what part of, your business comes from the e-commerce or what part of, part of part of your business comes from the uh, physical stores out there? So the physical stores is about 56%, 44% of the business comes from uh, online channels. Um, now online channel also includes our own web store and shopping app and the marketplaces. Uh -huh. uh, and, and that's the broad split, I would say. And do you like, do you foresee a future where you will see that, you know, more online uh, purchases will happen? Well, yes. Uh, but, but the good thing is, I would say two, three things here. Yes, of course, online will grow. Today, an e-commerce uh, uh, today is, has a reach of, let's say, even the horizontals have a reach of about 120 million. If you uh -huh. look at the projections, this is going to double uh, very, very soon. So more and more people uh, will shop on e-commerce platforms going forward. Uh, so definitely that will grow. But what is to be also kept in mind is that in, in India, offline uh, shopping is very, very important. A uh, part mm. of somebody's entertainment, right? Mm. Because of various uh, today a family or a group of friends love going and shopping in a, in, a, in a store because that's a part of their entertainment, right? And then... Mm watch a movie, eat out, shop. So it will never uh, go out of fashion and go out of sync. So hence, as a brand, you strongly are also, you know, from a brand's perspective, uh, offline stores give a great opportunity to engage with the consumer at a much deeper level. Absolutely. Right? Uh, E-commerce provides a lot of convenience uh, and, and in stores, you get a lot of opportunity to engage. So I think both of the channels are equally important, and we see we and with penetration that we have been discussing into these markets, I think even um, even offline will grow very strongly. Abhishek, I wanted to understand that a lot of brands out there are extensively using influencer marketing, and I think Puma also uses influencer marketing to a certain extent. So, you know, um, how, what do you think that um, you know does? Macro influencers really help in building your brand and really getting the revenue out, or do you think that these micro influencers coming from tie to tie three cities are helping more and you know are connected more to their uh, follower base? Well, the truth lies in between. To be honest, like both are very very important. Uh, it also depends on uh, what is your business scale, right? Now, uh, a business of our scale. Uh, we as much uh, benefit from our partnership with Virat Kohli as we benefit from a content creator who is on Instagram. Uh, and, you know, uh, so th it really depends on uh, on the business scale. At our scale, both are equally important. But if I have to have draw one common thread on what's required in, as, per, as per me in having a very solid uh, influencer strategy other than the choice, selection, execution, um, and the kind of content, which is, you know, very important. But what is important is credibility. Um, and that credibility is super important. Uh, it should be real. It should be really standing for what your brand stands for. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if your brand stands for this and that there is credibility, I think the consumers, otherwise consumers, especially young consumers, see through this. Um, just on the face, promotion work. 
So what part of your marketing budget goes into influencer marketing? If you could, you know, it's very difficult to say uh, how to segregate. Like what you put in which bucket? Because, like I said, <laughs> we have various types of influencer uh, influencers in terms of you know their followership. We also have athletes, entertainers. So it's very difficult to club this and say this is entertainment. This is influencer cost. What is media cost? What is content creation and production cost? But all I can tell you is that for us, it's a very important part of our brand marketing. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to understand since we are running out of time, I want to understand that what is the marketing budget for this year and what is the media mix that you are looking out for? Because I see that you are very strong on the digital front rather than TV or say uh, print out there, which is the larger uh, traditional uh, media, you know, mediums. So what do you think? What is what is your media mix this year? Okay, I'll definitely answer the second question. The first question, <laughs> from you, I'd like to know from you, why do you want to know that? What's what about the... What's our marketing budget? Why do you want to know? Because I want to know that, you know, such a big company, how much do they invest in their marketing? <laughs> do they need to invest or what? Yeah, I'll, I'll not give you the right number. And hence, I will <laughs> not give you a number. But I can say that, look, at the end of it, like every resource in business, it is not how much resource you have, but what you do out of that resource. So on... When I say X number, it really doesn't matter because honestly, that X can really, if deployed well and used well, can be far more meaningful. Uh, um, or if, if you have 10 X, uh, you might not be, uh, you know, very effective uh, with a much larger way. So I, I really don't want to get into exact number and percentages, but um, I can tell you um, that our choice of channel is digital. Um, uh, and, and we believe that given the kind of demographic profile of our addressable market, um, it is very, very important that we stay it that way. Yeah. So Abhishek, we were on that, uh, marketing budget as well as the media mix. I wanted to understand digital, mein aap kaha ja rahe you know, are, are you focusing on social media? Are you focusing on e-commerce platforms? If you could, you know, segregate in that if we can go more deeper into that because digital is vast yeah we're going every every channel which is relevant um, whether it is uh, search plat search platforms um, to uh, social platforms to e-commerce platforms to uh, broadcasting platforms OTTs um, yeah so I think uh, broadly uh, even uh, news platforms sports yeah. platform yeah uh, so we 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 are approaching digital in a very very uh, broad uh, uh, approach to digital yeah i just have two more questions to go is that is there a, you know on your cards to invest uh, in the in the upcoming sporting events like ipl or you know any other in the future in this year a lot of them are ongoing. Um, uh -huh. if, you, if you look at it, why just cricket? You know, in football, if you look at it in the league, two of, of the top teams, Bangalore Football Club and Mumbai City FC, um, we are partnered up. Um, we are, uh, we are, we have a uh, partnership with Royal Challengers Bangalore. Uh, then, if you look at uh, even running events, on-ground running events, we partnered up with the Delhi Half Marathon. This year, we partnered up with a very interesting property called uh, the Devil Circuit, uh, okay. which is an obstacle race, which happens in multi-cities, about 10 cities, very interesting platform uh, for runners. Um, and overall, those who, who take the So various um various sports we have we are we have a large list of on um, grassroots investments in in cricket football running grassroots investment in boxing so uh, various uh, sporting um, you know uh, events 
we are already associated with it. So it's not just uh, athletes um, that that we engage with. So you will also be extending your association with RCB as well this year? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Greatest, greatest, greatest. Um, just the last question. We were, we, were, we were also RCB uh, WPL. Uh, we we are a part of that as well. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Quite a few. So that means that your marketing budget is segregated in a vast way, wherein you know sporting events is a part of it. All these influence outreach, uh, marketing outreach is a part of it. Your, uh, you know, your ambassadors, where is they come from entertainment industry or the cricketing industry. Um, they are like that is also part of your marketing. Uh, this thing and then you have digital also which is like uh, you know a very vast channel wherein you have all these search based platforms e-commerce platforms your d2c platform so yeah it's gonna be like a big budget for marketing if i'm not wrong well i think uh, because of the of of the size of our business um we have a very large marketing budget i'm not denying that <laughs> okay great so are you trying to open some new stores also this year apart from the 400 plus stores that you have absolutely um, like we discussed tier 2 tier 3 cities are bringing up new opportunities in terms of new new streets new cities to open stores in and also uh, even even uh, more established cities metros have new malls coming up where we are opening stores. So yes, of course, we will continue to invest uh, in uh, opening more stores and yeah. penetrating the market. Okay. Um, Abhishek, I have two questions. One is that, you know, um, seeing the trend these days, as a marketer, I'm asking you, not someone from Puma. So I want, uh, as a, you know, brand stakeholder, I'm asking you, is that, you know, there are a lot of brands who are instigating nostalgia. There are so many brands we see out there, the campaigns. They're, they're going back to what they were back in 90s or early 2000s. So why do you think, you know, brands are following this trend? Whereas, you know, there is so much happening in the digital trend. Well, uh, see, today the thing is that uh, heritage and going back in time is never, it's, it might seem very counterintuitive. But uh, even as trends, and we are, we are a lot into, you know, fashion trends as well. So we see that fashion trends keep coming back. They're, they're often very cyclical. And going back in time uh, builds a lot of heritage value, uh, which even the uh, youngest of the young consumers love. Um, and, and so that's, that's uh, very, very, I would say, very important. As a, as a brand, we do that. We, we Even from a product standpoint, we bring out some of our heritage products uh, and put modern, progressive language to that. Uh, and, and, and they're very popular. So mm -hmm. um, I would say that it's a, it's a very, I would say it's a, it's a smart strategy because it follows what consumers want and consumers really want to look back in, into history uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's why brands do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Abhishek, there's a lot of conversation about inclusivity and, you know, the LGBTQAI plus about, you know, and brands like you are focusing more on them and, you know, trying to raise certain, um, trying to, you know, blur certain boundaries. So as you know, I wanted to understand how Puma is contributing in that, uh, well, I, 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 I am a firm, personally, I'm a believer that we all have to be gender neutral or uh, gender agnostic, right? The best form of diversity is not to treat people special or marginalize them and say that, hey, because you're X, Y, Z, I'm treating you like that. And, and I think that's the, that's the, best in the purest form of diversity that it is it doesn't matter right and i think uh, organizations which end up doing that you know of course there is a reality that people have uh, different um, uh, different uh, uh, preferences or genders have 
have marginalized people uh, in the past and that's the gross reality but i would say that as as progressive companies i think it's our responsibility um also not to do positive discrimination sometimes because you know I, i'll give you an example today let's say if somebody in the team knows that the reason the person is at a particular role is because of xyz reason and not because of that person deserves it right i think you are hitting on somebody's self respect right so i think the, the what we should all chase what we should all work towards is to create gender neutrality uh, and uh, and becoming agnostic to the person's gender and uh, preferences absolutely absolutely anything in particular that you the brand is doing it or to you know take the stand well, having in inclusiveness in terms of again not by uh, you know not because we are driven by a target but trying to create our organization and our culture in our stores and in our office to accept everyone uh and and welcome everyone uh again uh, do i have a percentage of how many of this and a number no never because then again you're defeating it's a self defeating process my last question to you is that you know um, how big is the indian market for a global brand like yours and you know what are the future plans well uh, with all that we discussed you can understand that we very excited about uh, india and we are super excited about the future uh, because it's a truth that you know india will become a very very uh, large consumer market india will india's importance in the global in the world order will will grow and that shown in whether it is the investor community or global brands or uh, you know the 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 overall interest of even on a geopolitical basis india is getting more and more relevance and that will happen uh, and as a brand we are very excited because of two reasons a india is getting very interesting uh, b um, our category in india has because we are coming from a very low base we were a sporting culture uh, 10 years down the line was not something to write home about and hence the only way was to go upwards and that and that's happening at a tremendous pace uh, and yeah. and our business will benefit out of that we want to stay relevant and and and, and leverage that trend so overall we we will continue to invest very heavily we are very very excited to be uh, looking at the future uh, in india absolutely thank you very much abhishek for talking to us and you know sharing your insights and puma's uh, future plans in india and uh, this me tanzila sheik will be signing off let's talk more about you know the campaign next time when you come up to mumbai or anywhere great talking to you have a great day sheik thank you pleasure being here